Maxpedition calls this the active shooter bag. Now, this is no longer in production. They used to make multiple colors. Maxpedition is a great company. They make a lot of really good products. They used to actually have a smaller version of this where instead of three mag pouches, you just had two and it was half the size of the bag. Um, full disclosure, they didn't give me this bag. I had to purchase this by myself. I'm not affiliated with Maxpedition. However, if you want to purchase uh, like type bags I will put the links down below they do make a new version of this where the three mag pouches are not sticking out there's actually a map case that goes over it sort of to hide the mag pouches but they are still available and you can put them back there uh, the name of that bag is the max edition jumbo ASR VersaPack so it'll be in their VersaPack lines so if you're familiar with the VersaPack where it was just one big pouch and a water bottle and all that it's it's basically their shoulder bag version uh, and like I said it comes in different colors green brown black gray etc uh, they also make another one that's a little bit cheaper the ASR VersaPack uh, the one I'm talking about is about uh, 160 bucks so it's a little bit expensive uh, the next Maxpedition is called a PALS mag bag and what they do is they just take off this completely and they make another large pocket where it's just instead of the, the external pockets you put them then inside so that's a little bit more discreet if you're looking for that version and that one's about hundred and ten dollars so it's a little bit cheaper and Maxpedition makes great stuff um, I've always been a big fan and uh, if you are looking for something cheaper, you can also check out 511 Tactical Bailout Bag. It's about $67, and SOG makes something for about $20, which I am not a big fan of 511 products because a lot of their stuff is made cheaply, and I'm really not a fan of SOG, but if you are looking for the budget option and you want something to carry your gear, then you could use those okay so that's pretty much it there are a lot of other companies that make it I think even Condor makes it so if you're interested in this type of gear um, I'll put all the links down below and then you could browse and make your own decision now what I like about Max Edition is that most of their stuff is made like uh, it's just made like a tank I think it's a thousand denier Cordura so it's a little bit heavier but it's made for mil spec and it will take a beat and it's also uh, semi waterproof uh, the zippers are all excellent I mean I've had packs made by Max Edition for years and they have not bro broken so really good stuff um, it's not indestructible but you get what you pay for okay so that being said I don't want you to get hung up on the pack but what it's used for now they call this the active shooter response bag and I think their marketing was mostly towards military SWAT guys um, police officers uh, sheriffs that kind of thing field agents somebody that would be able to pull this bag out and then just go uh, kill the bad guy and uh, call it a day um, that being said, it's not a bug out bag, get home bag, um, it's, it's not for that. It's, it only has two purposes. One is to make holes and the other one is to plug holes. That's it. That's the only purpose of this bag. So there shouldn't be any food. If you want to throw a bottle of water in there, that's fine. You should not be in a firefight longer than you have to be. Um, that's how people get killed. That's how people get hurt. Your only objective is to stop the threat and then or and or escape from the threat. For me, this bag is essentially for any type of home intrusion, something where, you know, people are trying to get in or or harm me or my family, that kind of thing. If there was a natural disaster where I had to leave right away, I can grab this kit and go. Now, I would also take my bug out bag, I would also take, you know, my wife's and the kids stuff, but this would definitely go with me. And what I like about it is that it's all inclusive, so I don't have to go looking for anything. Um, as a side note, what I would also do is I would add some type of body armor. Now this is just here for representation. I have multiple versions of body armor, but if you wear a plate carrier or if you want to wear soft armor, um, that's great. Do that. And what I would do is I would take body armor, 
my uh, rapid response bag and my rifle and I would be kitted out to face any threat. Now I'm not going to get into the whole scenario where um, you know there's a lot of guys that want to be sheepdogs and they want to run into schools. I'm not going to get into that. Um, it's, that's it's, Whatever you feel is necessary is up to you. This bag for me specifically is for any type of emergency where I need to bail out or any type of home intrusion or somebody is trying to take the life of me, myself or my family. Okay, so understand that. Um, that being said, I want you guys to please excuse my hands. Um, I have been grinding steel for a long time. So if, uh, if you're interested right here, you can see this is the Mark One Scout. It's made in 154 CM. I'll give you guys a little bit of a closer look. Uh, this is a customer's blade, so I'm not completely finished with it, but I've been grinding on this steel all day. And the reason why I bring it up because it is relative to the conversation and it's a shameless plug, right? So, uh, black linen micarta, 154 cm, uh, which is stainless steel. And I made a nice Coke bottle type of handle on there. Uh, stainless steel pins. They requested a Scandi grind because it's going to do bushcrafting with it. Uh, probably not the best tactical knife, but. Um, Again, I can make this in saber grind, and if you guys are interested in any knives uh, for the outdoors, then please go to 3 and check out all the stuff I have up there. Now, any type of fixed knife is probably going to be a lot better than a folding knife, so if you wanted to add some type of fixed blade to this pack, you can. Uh, I'll show you all the molly webbing that's available on this pack. Um, Shameless plug, sorry guys, but like I said, if you're interested and you want to help support the channel, purchase a knife, go to the links down below. All right, enough of that. So, <clears throat> Max Position is also great because they have these inserts. Um, it's not only Max Position that makes it, but uh, they make these inserts. These are mag pouch carriers, but you can put anything in here. So, a flashlight, a Leatherman, you know, like I said, anything that you think you would need these loops for they're available and they're velcro and they stick on the inside of the bag uh, they make another version which I'll show you that's inside there and uh, they also make holsters uh, they make a max edition holster that is sort of like this with the velcro in the back this is a universal holster it's good but it doesn't work with a light and I'll show you that in a second uh, I happen to have a pistol inside that bag where that is my home protection gun and I'll get into that in a second but I'll show you why this is good to have but if you have a light on it it can get hung up so stay tuned for that on the outside of the bag really good construction it has padding on the back so it doesn't rub against you the shoulder straps are sufficient like I said uh, it has like this nice mesh so sweat guard this is all adjustable all right so you can adjust it to your shoulder height length that kind of thing buckles are adjustable even though they are plastic um, they have never broke on me and this is the waist band all right so what will happen is if you are using this bag uh, use it like a sling bag and then you can take this out if you need to and then throw it around your waist and then that, what that does is it keeps the bag from falling forward and like I said with this bag there's a lot of weight in here it might not look like it because it's small but I have in this bag six magazines six P mags so one two three four five six that's a lot of weight so understand that the bag will want to pull forward okay that's understandable that's what that waist that waist pad is for that um, you put it around your back and you cinch it tight and then this way it doesn't move around um, military GI earplugs if you have the chance if you don't don't worry about it I know a lot of guys said they're gonna use ear pro um, if someone breaks in the house it's gonna be very very quick and you're gonna have very very little time to react that being said, I might not have time to get to earplugs or all the fancy stuff. So all I have to do is unzip this, pull out my pistol, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Now the pistol's empty now for the video, 
but I will load this up in a second, okay? And my wife knows where this bag is at all times. She's proficient in uh, shooting the Glock uh, 17, 19, and all she has to do again is pull that out and she's ready to go. If you have kids like I do, um, make sure it, they know to stay away from it, make sure it's high up. I know a lot of people have safes, I have safes, but I think that if you are safe and um, make sure that you have this up in a higher position uh, and talk to your kids about gun safety, then you should be good to go. All right, on the outside, here's what I have. I have two tourniquets. Uh, these tourniquet couch, uh, pouches, again, you can buy them on Amazon. I'll, I'll show you the links down below. So there's one in here. And this is all molly webbing, as you can see in here. There's more molly webbing, okay? These are two cat tourniquets. Uh, if you want to get the other ones, it's fine. Get any type of tourniquet that you know that you are proficient in, all right? Like I said, on this molly webbing, you can put other stuff on there. So like I said, if you want to put uh, another knife or you want to put something over there, that's fine. But those tourniquet pouches do not come with this, this bag. What does come with the bag is on this side, are two mag pouches. Now, this is my quick reload, all right? And for your information, this is a 124 grain um, spear gold dot. These are excellent, excellent rounds, highly recommended. Um, I've, I've seen what they've done to, uh, to people. They are devastating, so really no shit. They're an excellent round. Um, this is... Uh, surefire is a surefire yeah is a surefire light this probably cost you about 50 bucks I'll put the link down below it's just a regular on off high low and the reason I put that light in there is because if the light on my gun goes down at least I can see if it is a home invasion in the middle of the night I uh, probably want to be able to see the bad guy and if you watch my video I am using this I like the Make sure that the button is accessible, so if you need to do a cigar method, you can. So I'm a big fan of that. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into the bag. Now, when it comes to the bag itself, like I said, very good, sturdy construction. There's a couple things in here that you may or may not agree with. This is my bag. This is what I do. There's only so much stuff I could put in there, and it's very heavy to begin with because I said I got I got extra ammo in there, so it's a lot of weight. And I don't know about you, but I need to be mobile with this bag. So what do I have in here? Is my Glock 17. All right, with the TLR1, I have to write things down now because I don't always remember. Uh, <clears throat> this is Bravo concealment. I'll put the link down below. Uh, they make excellent products. I think this is the second version. They make the three now. It's outside the waistband. The only reason I really have this in here, and let's talk about that now. This gun is empty. This is a stock Glock. It's a Glock 17, and it has a TLR1 HD Lumen HD. Yeah, TLR1 HL. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, really, really bright light. It's about 800 lumens. It takes two CR123 batteries. Uh, what I like about it is it has multiple options, right hand, left hand. Really good light, and it's not that expensive. Streamlight, um, Streamlight makes a good product for an affordable price. If you want Surefire, go with Surefire, right? To each his own. I changed the uh, sights to um, Chujikon HDs. I like the big orange dot in the front. I'm a big fan of that. And uh, I put a skimmer trigger in there. Okay, this is uh, Haley's uh, strategic skimmer trigger. You can get them from Glock. I think it's uh, glocktriggers.com. It doesn't change the poundage of the trigger. What it does is it takes up all the slack. The reason I went with this type of setup and not this, and this would be a little bit more ideal um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is a um, this is just a, a regular run-of-the-mill adjustable Velcro holster. Okay, so you can adjust it by just taking it apart. And this is more along the lines of what Maxpedition has. That everybody has one of these. It's not a big deal. They call it a universal holster. 
What I found though is when I go to place it inside the bag, just snap this close and this is all adjustable as you can see here it fits real nice if I needed to withdraw it from the bag I could pull it out right but what happens is sometimes this velcro piece or this piece will get stuck behind the light and now I can't get the gun out all right there's nothing worse than trying to get your pistol out and it gets jammed up or caught on stuff now they make other velcro holsters that with a light or a light variant so that wouldn't be such of a problem but understand i'm really if i'm in an emergency or dire situation all right it's a lot easier just to kick this off with like a a, a thumb or i could pull it off on the side of the bag and it'll just shoot off all right it comes off almost automatically so it's not a big deal alternately if i am leaving my house and i need to leave now I have a holster that comes with me, all right, makes sense. Or my wife has a gun that comes with her. Yeah, granted it's a Glock 17, but um, with a light on it, I mean, this is pretty much everything you need in a home defense or duty use for that matter, all right? So um, that's my setup. I think it's, I, you know, in my own opinion, let me know what you think down below, but I think that if you have the holster inside the bag, it gives it a little bit more protection. It does cover the trigger guard. Uh, I keep all my guns hot um, with it rounded in the chamber. Again, like I said, safety first. Make sure it's out of the way of children's reach. Make sure they understand gun safety. All that good stuff. Um, but if something does happen, I want my wife to be able to pull this out. Use it if she needs to. If she doesn't, she could just holster. No racking of the slide. No condition to none of that stuff just ready to go at a moment's notice okay so that's enough about the pistol let's talk about what else is in the bag now inside the bag for me i have um this is a trauma pad for it's an abdominal pad it's very absorbent i've used these in, in the, before in the past you, I, you can get these in bulk they're not very expensive uh they are 10 inch by 30 inch so they're very, very big for a very, very large wounds. Um, I've used these in car accidents, people that were cut, slashed, whatever, and they work excellent and they're very, very cheap. You can get them on Amazon. You can get a whole case of those for like a couple bucks. They're not very expensive. All right, so I also have in here, let's see, uh, my H&H &H bandage. My H&H &H bandage, uh, primarily you're gonna find this in any military, um, uh, military IFAC all right that's where I got mine again it has instructions on it but Israeli bandages will do just as good uh, there's a lot of other companies out there that use these big bandages this is basically for big wounds okay anytime you got to tie it off or something like that it works great again like I said we're trying to stop wounds uh, a couple things is uh, else I have in there uh, these are NPAs um, NPAs work great for head trauma, head wounds, that kind of thing. If you're shot in the face or shot in your mouth and you can't breathe, uh, you're going to have to put one of these down your nose. Um, understand that uh, this type of trauma needs to be practiced. So I am a first responder um, trained personnel, so I'm able to use this but it is not easy to do and it's certainly not easy to do under stress again the whole idea is to make sure that you stopped your threat and then you can go back and do your first aid okay so if anybody gets hurt or shot or their face or their jaws your your mpa is is way to go all right so i'm not going to get too much into it because i'm not a doctor and i don't want to give you medical advice all right make sure you seek your own medical advice uh these high flint chest seals are excellent i highly recommend them they're a little bit pricey get to the two pack all right this is made by north american rescue uh, if you have a sucking chest wound some of you guys that served in the military know what that means this even has dummy directions on there wipe dirt fluid from skin and gauze blah blah blah, blah. the press firmly on the skin uh, if you have a bullet wound in your chest uh, you have not too long to live but if you have a shot in your um, in your lungs this may save you it may help you until you get 
more medical attention. So really good to have. Make sure you get your training again. I'm not trying to give you medical advice. Just make sure you know what the hell you're doing. Now, all this stuff that you see here is mostly for me uh, or and or someone else. What I do have in here for medical for other folks is these packs. These packs, these bags are about a nine by six. They're about eight to 10 mil thick. You can get them on Amazon. And these packs are individual first aid kits that I could give to somebody. So if I am actively engaging somebody and more people get shot around me, hopefully not, but if they do, I can give this to them and I can move on and try to get all the threats, all right? So I have one of those and I have two of those. So again, like I said, I have a cat tourniquet in here. This one has quick clot. It also has a uh, Israeli bandage and it has some gloves on top. This one has another tourniquet. I think this is called a KT4 or TK4 tourniquet. Uh, not a lot of people are familiar with that, but it's a little bit older of a tourniquet. So it's not like your cat tourniquet or your uh, um, you know, windless or it just doesn't have, it just works a little bit different. Um, dressing, it's a little bit older. It has some, uh, this is nonstick wrap, some absorbent pads and again, some gloves. So the idea of this is very simple. It's just to be able to take this pack, give it to somebody, move on. All right. Everything that's on the outside is yours. You know, if you're the only guy with the gun, you want to make sure that uh, you get the other bad guys. All right, let's finish up with what's inside this pack. As you can see, it's almost completely empty now. All I have here is a couple of Glock 17 magazines. And then on the opposite side, I just have some set of gloves and some trauma shears. Okay, so you can add more things to this. Like I said, if you had the Velcro... All right, they also have admin stuff that you can put on the inside, but it gets to the point where it's so heavy, it's almost unwieldy. And to have all this weight on one shoulder might be a little bit difficult. But the kit itself, in my opinion, is sound. I think it's important to be prepared. I think it's uh, necessary, especially in an environment where it's close quarters. And if you have to leave your area or if you have to get to safety, it's always good to just have a bag and go. It's not a bug out bag. It's just an emergency response bag, okay, or rapid response bag, if you will. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that little bell, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Look at all the links. I'll have all the links of all this information and all this stuff below. And, of course, go to 3 if you are interested in a handmade knife. Thank you very much and as always, be safe.